Welcome everybody to Extrapolated, Dumpy256 here and thanks for rejoining and revisiting for this epic train ride um, that we have embarked on in episode 1. We found a train, we embarked upon said train, shot at a bridge, shot at some deer and looked at some pretty scenery. What I'm seeing this series developing into is a series of musings where I will be discussing random topics that just pops up into my head as we travel through the beautiful world of GTA 5. So sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. Wind farms and satellite farms, satellite dish farms, where we receive messages from alien life forms probably millions and billions of light years away and we try and decode it with our limited technology and our primitive little minds try to understand the, f the ciphers they send us. Why would a uh, advanced civilization send us, okay, a relatively, um, according, oh, ooh, quarry. Just, just divert quickly. This is a freaking awesome thing. This is what I love about this game. They've got these quarries and stuff that they, they just build. Someone built that. Someone took time to build that little quarry, and uh, it, it just looks brilliant. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, back to aliens. Why would a advanced civilization send us? these little messages, coded messages. Why not understand that we are freaking well not as advanced as they are and therefore send us messages that we can easily decode and understand. So, for instance, if they want to invade us, send us a message saying, We would like to invade you. Resistance is futile. Send us something like that so we can actually know what's happening uh, we are stuffed and um, abandon all hope and then we can all just surrender and have them butt probe us until the end of time. Fun times! Then we have the issue of the crash landings. Roswell, all these different crash landings in the middle of nowhere. I mean dude, you traveled light years to get here, you spent some time warp drive still it would have taken you a few hours to get here so you took the time to travel millions of light years to this solar system which is way outside of your neighborhood i mean you go out Ooh, morning has broken wakey wakey eggs and bakey yeah um so they travel way outside of their freaking neighborhood they go to the solar system out of all the billions that are out there, they choose ours. I mean, think about it, out of all the years that our astronomers have been observing the known universe around us, uh, millions of light years that they've been looking at planets and things, and yes, they found one or two or quite a few inhabitable, let's say in inverted commas, uh, planets that might be inhabitable. Ooh, pretty. Um, they haven't found aliens. I mean, out of all the years that they've been looking at space with all the telescopes, they haven't found aliens, but the aliens found us. Okay, great, right. Let's say they have got these technology which they can just quickly scan and find us. They come here, they crash land in a desert. They do not land next to a town or a populated area, pitch a tent, get a TP, alien TP, and just chill. Chill next to a freaking town. Observe us. And then come say hi. Do that. Maybe they're playing the long game. Oh my gosh, it looks nice. Look at that. Sheesh. Anyway, they don't play the... Uh, they might be playing the long game. Um, observe and invade. I don't know. Observe them over a few thousand years. Uh, I don't know, maybe they've been observing over millions of years. I mean, to them, puberty, you only reach puberty at two and a half million years. I don't know. Who knows? I haven't met one of them. I haven't been as fortunate to be butt probed by one. But it's just weird. And then you look at the people that were actually abducted. Good grief. Look at that. They, they are all freaking nutjobs. I have not heard yet of a lawyer 
or a scientist or a um, person in his right mind that's not looking at crystals and karma and the universe has been speaking to me, bra. Yeah, I've been taking this, um, ooh, pretty. I've been uh, sucking on this root this one day, and they were like right there, bra. Right there, man. It was gnarly. They, they, they spoke to me, bro, in like an audible voice. They said, and I understood every single word of it, bra. Whoa. Someone's in trouble. Police! Police! The popo Water. Wow, look at the water. It's beautiful. So you listen to some of these abduction encounters, testimonials, or whatever they are. The people have been abducted in a desert, or they were hiking in the forest, and all of a sudden they see this bright light, and they were abducted, beamed up into the spaceship, and been experimented on and um, had either a religious experience that changed their life forever or they have been violated um, in the most gruesome and horrifying way. I don't know. Uh, I don't have answers for this and these same people were found in deserts or in the middle of a forest and they saw this bright light and they were beamed up into this thingy and I suspect they either suffered from heat stroke or exhaustion or malnutrition or they ate a berry that made them hallucinate. I don't know. Or they were just smoking, um, I don't know, paracetamol or something. Ganja. I don't know. But what will these aliens find when they get here? Will they find intelligence? As we are seeking intelligence out there. So when I'm talking about finding intelligence, it's like us. We seek a greater knowledge outside of ourselves. That's why we send probes into space, satellites. That's why we look into the void, to find something greater than ourselves, something that explains who we are, why we are, and what we are. And I do not believe that an alien will find that here, because they already are so advanced how can they find something greater in themselves in such a primitive civilization? The only thing that makes sense to me is resources. Something that planet Earth has that they would need. And I cannot think that would be oxygen because, again, something outside of ourselves, something so advanced that has evolved over millennia, um, I don't believe they have to use oxygen. If you look at all the planets around us, many of them do not have a breathable atmosphere. So a resource like sand or CO2, uh, things that we might not really find that important might be absolutely crucial for their existence. But thanks for joining me on this little adventure that we are on. Episodic Adventure Time with Dumpe on Extrapolator. Uh, like and subscribe and comment. Give me your views. Give me your ideas. It'll be interesting to see um, what the people are thinking. Because I'm not thinking, I'm riding the train. Oh, look how pretty this is. It's wonderful. Bye.